Aha! Hello everyone and welcome to Dr. Jenkila's lectures. Today's lecture is about fluorates. So fluorates are very common in the inpatient setting. And if you are working in the hospital, you probably have seen these IV bags. And these IV bags medication, they're dosed per patient differently, depending on the patient's condition. So it's very important to be able to calculate the correct dose, whether you are in school or studying for your board exam, NAPLEX exam, or if you are working in the hospital. So let's go ahead and tackle a few questions to have a better understanding of how to do these fluorates. So a couple of things to mention is that fluorates, they're usually dosed, um, depending on the patient, you may see them as one milligram, let's say per minute. Another patient could be numbers of drops per hour. And they can also be involved with, depending on the patient's weight as well, but those could be dependent on patient's weights as well. So patient weight could be involved in such flow rates. And this is basically a continuation of the medication for a duration of time. So a patient may receive this for eight hours or they could receive it for, let's say, a whole day, 24 hours, for seven days a week during the hospital time. So just depending patient to another patient. So let's go ahead and get into the first example. So example number one says, JJ, so we have a patient named JJ, will receive 500 milligram of drug A. So we have a dose of 500 over here, and the medication is called A. This could be any medication that has been added to a 250 milliliter IV bag. So we have, I always like to draw things just to make it easier to see it. So we have a bag that is, this is IV bag that has 250 ml. Uh, this could be normal saline, could be D5W, just depending again on the patient's situation. And there are 500 milligram of this medication in here. So we have 500 milligram of this medication inside this bag. So the administration rate is 350 microgram per minute. So we have an administration rate, this is it. So we're given this patient 350 microgram per minute of this medication. And the question is asking, what is the flow rate in milliliter per hour? So I'm gonna draw another line in red over here. This is super important. So it's really, really important if you are coming across such questions to, to go ahead and look at the what the question is asking. So here the question is asking milliliter per hour. So the reason why it's very important, it's because this is going to be our final answer. These are the units that you should focus on as you are solving these questions. And this is one of the easiest way to remember how to solve such question is basically solve the question to the final units that the question is asking. So here, if we are looking for the final units to be in milliliter per hour, then I need to solve this question and have milliliter on the top and hour on the bottom as an answer for this question. So the way I would handle this question is, first of all, let's look over here. So we have 500 milligram in 250 milliliter. So what we need first of all to do is to take the milliliter. So what we're we gonna do first of all is we're gonna do, let's move over here. So we have 250 milliliter. We keep the milliliter on the top and then there are 500 milligram. So we know there are 500 milligram of medication A in 250 milliliter. So we know that. So we have the, the milliliter which is here on the top, because we'd like to keep this milliliter. We don't want it to be canceled. And what are we gonna do right now? So what we're looking, first of all, we're looking for, let's see, milliliter per hour. So we're looking for an hour on the bottom. So we're gonna multiply this by 
So first of all, we have macrogram per minute. So we need to convert this milligram to macrogram in order to cancel milligram with milligram and then macrogram with macrogram because they're not part of the final answer. And that's what I meant by if you focus on the final units, it's really easier to come across this question and solve. So let's see over here. So we have, let's see. So there are, this is a conversion factor. For each one milligram, there are 1,000 microgram. Okay? So, now what I can do, basically, I can cross the milligram with the milligram. And I'm left with the milliliter over here, but I have microgram here. So what I'm going to do is basically multiply this by 300. 50 microgram over one minute. Now what I could do is cross these micrograms with each other. So now they're gone. So I have milliliter per minute and the question is asking milliliter per hour. So I need to convert this minute to hour. So the way we do this is also another conversion factor, which is basically multiplying. There are 60 minutes in one hour. So now what I could do, I can basically take the minute with minute and basically just solve the question right now because the answer will end up with milliliter per hour. So here is the units over here is an hour. Here we have a milliliter. So if I were to plug this in the calculator and basically just solve for it, just plug in these numbers. I should end up with an answer of, so let's draw an arrow. So the final answer should be 10.5 milliliter per hour. And this is my final answer for this question. So it really becomes really easier if you were to focus on the final answer units. Once you focus on them, it really becomes easier. You can just cross things out and then just, you know, get to the final answer. Now, another thing that I would like to mention when it comes into fluorates. So fluorates, they're really dependent on the concentration of the medication and the dose as well. So two things to keep in mind. So one thing that I would like to mention over here. So let's assume the question had, and instead of 500 here, I had 1,000 milligram. So in this case, the concentration, it's twice as much, right? And the, let's see, the bag is still 250. So instead of 500 over here, I would have 1,000 milligram. In that case, so if I had over here in this bag, so let's, let's draw this back over here. So if I had this bag over here, right? And there are 250 milliliter. And, and instead of 500, I had this 1000 was over here, right? So 1000 is twice as much as 500. So the concentration of the medication is twice as much right now. So if I were to answer this question, the difference in the answer without even doing anything, just knowing that there is a twice as much concentration, therefore the dose would be less by a half. So instead of 10.5 over here, the answer would be, so 10.5 divided by two basically. So 10.5 divided by two, it's going to be 5.25. And it's going to be milliliter per hour. So what happened, the reason why is, uh, is by half, the reason if that, it's because the concentration is twice as much. So always keep in mind what the question is asking you. So the question may give you a concentration at the end of the question. They may ask, oh, we're looking for this concentration right now. So what's the answer? So pay attention to, keep, to that and keep it in mind. So the concentration and the dose do matter in flow rates. Now, let's jump into question number two. Question number two says, 
if 100 milligrams, so let's see, we have 100 milligram down here. This is the medication, um, medication B, drug B, is added to 1,000 milliliters. So we have 1,000 milliliter IV bag. So let's draw this again over here. So here we have 1,000 milliliter. And in the, inside this 1,000 milliliter, we have 100 milligrams. So here we have 100 milligram of drug B. It's inside this. Okay. Now, the question says, let's see what it says. What is the flow rate? So we're looking for a flow rate, milliliter per hour. Again, here is the units. These are the final units that the question is asking. Just like this question over here, we're looking for milliliter per hour. Same thing down there. So this is my focus right now, milliliter per hour that will deliver, so will deliver 400 microgram per hour. So let's see, what are we going to do first of all? So we have 100 milligram of a drug B, right? It's inside this IV bag that has 1000 milliliter. And we're looking at the answer in milliliter per hour. So we don't need milligram. Milligram is not part of the final answer. In addition to that, we're looking in micrograms. So step number one, what I would do is basically convert this to microgram, just to make units with units match out so we can cancel them out. So first of all, let's do 100 milligram. And we know multiplying by for one milligram. So we cancel these out. There are 1000 microgram. Okay. So now what I could do basically just cancel this with this. So now they're canceled and my answer instead of being in milligram, now it's in microgram. So this will be 100,000 microgram. So basically right now, instead of 100 milligram and 1000 milliliter, we have 100,000 microgram, which is basically the same thing. It just the units are different right now. It's just the same medication, same concentration. So now we have this. What are we going to do? Because we're looking for milliliter, just like I said over here, if we're looking for something on the top and bottom, so here we're looking for milliliter to be on the top an hour and the bottom. So we're going to do the same thing like we did in this question. So what we're going to do is basically what we have 1000. So here we have 1000 milliliter. And what we have over here is 100,000 microgram. And the question is asking, what is the flow rate in milliliter per hour that would deliver 400 microgram per one hour? So here we're basically looking for the X milliliter. And we have 400 microgram per one hour. So if we cross and multiply, so let's do this. Basically, let's cross and multiply. So 400 times 1,000 and X times 100,000. So here, this is going to be, so here we have X times 100,000. So it's going to be X and then 100,000 microgram equal as we are, you know, crossing and multiplying equal 400,000, 400 times 1,000 is 400,000. And the units are milliliter, microgram per hour. Now, what I want to do is basically divide both sides by 100,000 microgram to cancel the micrograms. So, here 100,000 micrograms and here 100,000 micrograms. Now I can basically, what I can do is basically cancel this, this whole thing with the whole thing, and then cancel microgram with microgram. So, how many zeros? We have one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So I can cancel all zeros from both sides. And we have four over one. Therefore, the answer, and look at this. We have the milliliter is still up here and hour is still up here. 
So we have four milliliter. So the answer is, the final answer to this question is four milliliter per hour. And that's exactly what the question is looking for, milliliter per hour. Here we go. So we got the final answer. Now, let's move into the third question. Question number three says, male patient, 60 kilograms, so we have the weight over here, which is 60 kilograms, is on IV medication. So 250 milligram per 100 milliliters. So there are, so let's draw this again. So we have 100 milliliter over here. This is IV bag, okay? Inside this IV bag, we have 250 milligram of medication. So here we have inside this, we have 250 milligram. Okay. And this is in normal saline. So this is a normal saline 100 milliliter bag running at 10 milliliter per hour. So it's running at this rate. So this is the flow rate. So the question is giving us the flow rate. Okay, so what's the question is asking? So what is the dose? Oh, so he, the question gave us the flow rate and they're asking for the dose in microgram per kilogram per minute. So this is the question here right now. Something to keep in mind. And this is something that I have really learned myself and this is my own strategy. Some other people may have a different strategies, which is really okay. But this is how I like to come across such question and solve them is whenever I have three units in a question or really becomes confusing when I am really putting all the units together, like I'm solving for microgram, kilogram and minutes at once, it really becomes confusing because you have multiple factors to consider and you're like, okay, which one should I go first? Which one should I go second? And sometimes it takes way longer time. And you know, if you're studying for NAPLEX and if you're studying another examination, you really want to spend as much, less time as possible for each question. So here, my strategy is this. Basically, I always focus on two units. And here, for example, per this question, I am going only to focus on microgram and minute. Because what I could do, basically, if I can solve the question per these two units, okay, and then at the end, I can just divide by patient's weight. Here we go. Bingo. I got the final answer. I don't need to put all the, um, the component all together at once because it really becomes confusing. So let's do only with these two. And then at the end, I'm just going to have the weight divided by the weight. And here we go. We get the answer. So let's go. Patient is, we said 60 kilogram is on IV medication. So we have the medication over here and we're looking for these units. So first of all, what I would like to do, let's see. So we're going to go over. So we have the rate is 10 milliliter. So we have 10 milliliter and it's for hour. So we know that. And what do we need to do? So first of all, Milliliter is not part of the answer, so we need to cancel milliliters out. So here, let's see what we have. So we have over here milliliters, so we can multiply this 250 milligram over 100 milliliter. So now basically I can basically what I could do is cross milliliter with milliliter. And also one thing to keep in mind, the way I arrange this is basically I'm keeping the hours in the bottom because I'm going to cross multiply with hour and then minute in the bottom to keep the minutes at the bottom. So now we're canceling this with this. So milliliter is out. Now, step number two. So let's see over here what do we got. So if I would to, let's just cancel these. So we have 100 over here. So 2,500 divided by 100. So this is basically... It's 2,500, let's take this step, milligram over 100. And this is hour over here. So basically 100 out of two, so it's 25 milligram over one hour. That's the answer. So this is 25 milligram per hour. So I have this right now. Now what I need to do is basically to trying to get rid of this hour. So 
there are, let's actually keep the same pen. So basically there are, for each one hour, there are 60 minutes, right? So what I could do is basically cancel this hour with this hour and 25 milligram divided by 60 minute, let's see. And one more thing actually over here, in addition to this, because I wanna move into microgram, I'm going to, in addition to that, before I solve for this, multiply by, so I know there are 1000 microgram per one milligram, right? So what I could do, I could also take milligram with milligram again. So what I'm left with is basically microgram over here and minute over here. And this is what I was looking for earlier. So if I were to plug this in the calculator, 25 multiplied by one multiplied by 1000 divided by 60, I should end up with 400 and 16.6, and the units are microgram per minute. So now I have this, right? So what I need to do at the last step is basically divide by the weight, which is 60 kilogram. So if I were to divide this whole thing, so let's move it up here. So we said 416.6 microgram per minute dividing this whole thing by 60 kilogram see what i mean by keeping the last unit the kilogram at the end so 60 kilogram over here now plugging this in the calculator you should end up with 6.94 microgram per kilogram per minute and this is the final answer for this question. See how easy it comes out after just ta taking two units instead of taking all three at once? So this is my method and this is how I like to solve such questions. So this is it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below. And as always, thank you for watching.